Talk of early Indian history and the Harappans dominate a whole period. But what was happening in the rest of India for the 4,000 years that the Harappan civilization was progressing with people moving out of their huts to sprawling urban cities? This is what the map of the subcontinent looked like 4,000 years ago. Dotted as it was by not just farming settlements but chalcolithic cultures that you may have not even heard about. The Deccan College of Archaeology has done seminal work leading excavations across the sites from this period. So I caught up with the Vice Chancellor of the College, Dr. Vasant Shinde, to find out more. Dr. Shinde, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, you know, it's amazing that we look at the period of the Bronze Age and Harappa dominates. Yes. But the fact is that there was a lot happening in the rest of the Indian subcontinent uh, mm. parallelly. And from the early Harappan phase to the mature Harappan phase, there is a 3,500-4,000 year old year period. Yes. So tell us, what was the larger part of India like during that period? The entire region was occupied, in fact. We see the emergence of early farming communities in different parts of the country or other Indian subcontinent. So we call them either as Neolithic farmers or Chalcolithic farmers. In some region, in fact, you know, we find the developed stage. In some region, we find the initial stage and the developed stage also. So all over the, in the region, in fact. But we you know the work that we have done in fact in Mewar region, particularly at the site of uh, Gilun and Balathal, which we excavated. Now we, we are coming across the culture, in fact, now who was contemporary to the early Harappans there. And right from the early Harappan stage, you know, there is a lot of interaction in fact, in fact, between these two cultures. Hmm. And then, you know, the same culture in, in the Mewar region was also developing to some extent as the urban phase also. But, you know, they, it stopped in fact at certain stage. It did not go beyond that. And the reason for de that development there, because this is not known, because everywhere in fact in, in the, you know, rest of the Indian subcontinent, the cultures have remained only rural in fact in nature, not, you know, they have not gone beyond that. Only this culture was trying to develop, but then, you know, maybe because of some limitations, they stopped there only. But fact. Mewar is very close to the Harappan civilizational area. Yes. Let's look further afield to Karnataka, to Madhya Pradesh, to uh, Maharashtra. Right. You have Inamgaon, for instance, right, which right, is right. a very uh, vibrant and interesting uh, kind of culture. Right, right, yes. How do you see that in the context of the larger picture? No, similarly, because uh, Madhya Pradesh and Maharashtra is not really you know, away from the Harappan region because the Harappans were in, there in Gujarat. They were right on the border of Madhya Pradesh. So they were very close. But what is happening in fact now after the decline of the Harappans because most of the cultures emerge strongly, the periphery cultures, after the decline of the Harappans. So they are a little later maturing. They are a little mature, you know, later. And then, you know, on their material culture, you know, we see a lot of Harappan influence, you know, like on pottery particularly, very strong in fact, you know, even shapes, some of the shapes are like Harappan shapes, the painted decorations. So after, you know, the decline, you know, people have started moving, you know, some of the people in the periphery region, they came in Central India, in Maharashtra and help the so local you people. see it more as a movement, movement more, of the people, more yes. like a cascade yes, out yes, of yes. the Harappan region yes, right, but right. let's look at the pre Harappan uh, the early Harappan period at that time were there also parallel uh, developments of the same magnitude or do you think there was there were some factors that kind of made it a faster movement towards civilization in the Harappan culture area in the early stage you now we do not find that development everywhere only in certain regions, like Mewar, for example, we are getting there. Not in you know, Madhya Pradesh. The development happens only after 2000 BC. Same is Maharashtra, Karnataka also. Mm. So that region, you know, we do not really see. And there is a factor, in fact, why the cultures have, or rather, you know, we do not see the early evidence of the settled life in this part. And why the Chalkothi cultures have not, you know, flourished into the urban phase. Because the Harappans have flourished in fact in the most fertile region and that too in the Allium region, whereas most of the Chalkoti cultures flourish in the what we call as a black cotton soil. And that soil has a lot of limitations. They could grow agriculture but not surplus amount of agriculture, which the Harappans could do that in fact in their in their ecological zone. The Harappans were blessed because of the fertility of the area they were in. Meanwhile, we are still discovering what was happening elsewhere. 
A recent find in Sonoli threw up two chariots and as many as 125 burials dating back 3,200 years. It of course also made headlines. In fact, between 2800 and 1400 BCE, the Indian subcontinent had as many as 12 pockets which archaeologists describe as cultures based on their material remains, unique artifacts and rituals. In Nangao in Maharashtra, for example, excavations threw up unique urn burials. In Daimabad, on the banks of the river Godavari, the most famous find was this figurine of a possible priest known in history circles as a Daimabad man. Some archaeologists say he could have been a proto-Pashupati. The Ahar culture has as many as 90 sites on the banks of the Banas River. It is known for its copper axis. Up north in Burza home in Kashmir, settlers lived in underground pits which were usually circular or oval and erected massive stone megaliths as commemorative markers for the dead. Burza home, for instance, is another very big site. Yes. There is evidence of trade between Burza home and Harappan yes, cities. Yes, uh, right. Did these Chalcolithic cultures or pre Chalcolithic or early um, Chalcolithic yes, cultures yes. act as feeders to the Harappan cities in terms of raw material? Yeah, yeah, to some extent they have done that, in fact. There is a very interesting work done by one American scholar, Randall Law, and he has studied you know, the material in fact, found in the Harappan region. And he has found out the source, in fact, of that material. And a lot of these materials were controlled by the Chalkutic people or the Neolithic people in Burjom. So they were supplying, in fact. And you know, what the Harappans did, in fact, you know, very clever people. They had the technology with them. So they imported the raw materials from these people. And then ultimately, you know, they processed the material and they supplied the finished goods to the same people from whom they were getting raw materials. That is how, you know, they also acquired the prosperity also. Hmm. So this was con constantly happening, you know, during the Harappan times, in fact. Among the various cultures, Inamgaon is very interesting yes. because of their urn burials, uh, because of the goblets that you have from there. Yes, right. What do we know about Inamgaon? It's been a very big mystery, right? I mean, the, the, the entire rituals, the fact there were children and young babies or, or young yeah, right, kids right. Yes. who were buried. What do we know about that? So that was the, you know, the tradition the, you know, that was developed by the, you know, this local people. But this is also not new to the Indian subcontinent. We have similar kind of evidence at the site of Mehrgar going back to almost 7000 BC. So that was a tradition, you know, which was introduced. Of the burials. Yeah, uh, not exactly unburials, but burying the dead body within the settlement, either below the living floor or in the courtyard. So that tradition was there. And then, you know, the orientation was, you know, north-south. So that was followed in West throughout. And then the local people have introduced maybe more, in fact, you know, at Inamgao, uh, they have introduced, you know, uh, the different tradition or the custom for the children. You know, children were kept in two pots. So that was their innovation, in fact, you know, their, their, their rather, you know, tradition that, that was added, in fact, by the, by the local people. Mm. Otherwise, they have followed the same, you know, this tradition which was there right from the early times. There is a priest god concept, uh, very similar to the Pashupati concept of this alpha male figure. Yes. who is somehow a combination of virility and animalistic kind of uh, yeah, following. Right. Is that a common trait also that you see that along was, with yes, the fertility yes. goddess? Yes, sir. So, most of the, as I said, that most of the traditions continue. They have adopted even some of these, you know, religious beliefs also of the, you know, Harappans. And then, you know, they have given their own impact, you know, their own uh, maybe meaning to that. So, that is a continuity, again, I, I don't see that that is a kind of innovation or different tradition which was introduced by these people but they have adopted and mo maybe little modified and introduced their own concepts. What happens to these Chalcolithic cultures that pop up in different parts of India? I mean so do they, they just, just become uh, transform into something or they continue on to this uh, No, they continue to you know remain not flourish in fact they continue to remain sustained till 1000 BC from you know 2000 BC to 1000 BC. And after that, we again see the decline of the Chalcolithic cultures. And in the Deccan region, particularly South India, Deccan region, uh, probably the, the climate factor also was re responsible because you know, we have done some work in, at the site of Nevasa. And we have found one sterile layer between the Chalcolithic and the early stories. And that sterile layer, according to geologists, they have analyzed that. 
it was formed under the severe you know arid condition severe so arid. that was happening in fact that climate you know sir you know cycle was happening you know from wet to you know dry and that was affecting you know the cultures and this cultures being purely dependent on agriculture very less you know depend on on the technology they you know were completely on the mercy of the you know rainfall like the harappans climatic change also hit the many chalcolithic cultures that evolved in the bronze age a lot of work has been done but a lot more is needed because sadly we still know so little about these others who have left their mark